And today we're going to be talking about phylum mollusca. <clears throat> and uh, you should have your note sheet out, hopefully. And uh, I'll try to kind of go through this. Um, obviously, since it's a video, if I'm going too fast, just pause it at any point. Um, so mollusks are the next uh, step in our evolutionary um, road trip here. We talked about worms last time. And, um, you know, we saw some big leaps in the worms with going from platyhelminthes, those are the flat worms with no body cavity, um, to the nematodes. Uh, that would be the round worms that had a body cavity, but not a true body cavity. And ended with um, Annelida, the segmented worms, uh, that did have a body cavity. We saw cephalization. Um, so basically the arrangement of um, sense organs at one side of the body. Um, we're actually going to see some de-evolution in some groups uh, in the mollusks, um, which can happen from time to time. Um, but for the most part, we're starting to move toward um, more complex organisms, more complex nervous systems, more complex overall systems um, as we move toward uh, the most complex organisms, um, the, chord the chordates or the vertebrates. Um, so mollusks are, here's our characteristics page of a mollusk. Um, Mollusca means soft body, and there are, again, this is um, estimates, but 100,000 to 150,000 species of mollusk uh, living on Earth today. Um, mollusks have a two-part body. Um, they have a head foot, and that's not the two parts, that's one part, um, and the visceral mass. A head foot um, is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a head um, attached to a foot and easily seen in um, a snail species uh, where the head um, and the foot are all one part. And then the body mass um, would be up here. Uh, the mantle basically secretes a calcareous, that's a calcium shell, uh, in most mollusks. And um, this is why mollusks, uh, for the most part, have shells. Uh, and these are their defensive mechanisms. These, these are invertebrates. So they don't have any um, backbones. Um, they don't have any bones at all. Uh, most mollusks have a specialized feeding apparatus called a radula. Uh, this is an electron microscope image of a radula. Um, and they use this for feeding. Uh, they use it to kind of scrape at... Um, surfaces of rocks or, um, you know, other surfaces, piers and things like that to get algae or, or other types of food. Well, some radula are used for actually um, burrowing through other mollusks' shells um, and feed that way. Um, so you'll see um, as we kind of go through, there, there, there's a wide variety of feeding styles that we see um, in mollusca. Uh, these guys are bilaterally symmetrical. Uh, so you can split them in half, and they have a coelom. We're going to see that in every organism that we, we, we um, talk about moving forward. And most species are strongly cephalized, and again, that means that they have um, sense organs located at one side of their body. In other words, they have a head. Um, there is one group of mollusks that does not have that, uh, but we'll talk about that when we get to them. Um, so there are eight classes of mollusks, but we're only going to cover four. We're going to cover, um, you know, the more common mollusks, some the ones that have animals that you probably have heard of before. Um, we kind of did the same thing with worms. Uh, you know, there are actually eight phyla of worms. Um, there's only one phyla of mollusks, um, but there's eight classes, so we'll step below that. But we're, we're, we're going to cover four of those. Um, the four are polyplacophora which are commonly known as the chitons. Uh, these are a marine species with shells consisting of eight plates that look like an old Greek tunic. Um, you have the gastropods, gastro meaning stomach, poda meaning foot. Uh, so stomach, foot would be how you'd say this in Latin. Uh, these are the snails and slugs. Uh, the bivalves, bivalvia, so think two. Valve is another term for shell, so these are two shells with a hinge. Uh, these are clams and other mussels. And uh, you have cephalopoda, cephala, head, poda, foot. So these are head, foot. Um, basically, these are the squid 
octopus and other and its relatives. Um, and these are the most advanced of the mollusks and most advanced of the animals that we've talked about so far. Um, but they're basically head uh, breaks up into into tentacles. Um, so they've kind of modified uh, their single foot uh, into several tentacles that it uses for a variety of purposes. They also have a siphon that they use um, to take up water and then shoot it out, uh, which allows them to move at very great, uh, very fast speeds um, in the water. Um, so kind of rather unique um, apparatus. So polyplacophorans are the chitons. Um, there's approximately about 600 species of these guys. Uh, they have those um, basically plates. Uh, there's eight of them uh, along the back of the organism. And it's designed for them to be able to roll up into a ball for defensive purposes. Uh, they have a muscular foot. So this is the top of the organism, the shell of the organism. The organism is actually underneath. Um, and they can actually um, use that muscular foot to, 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 to suction cup themselves um, to surfaces. Uh, these guys live in areas where there's a lot of waves and um, they don't want to get, you know, knocked off their, um, their, their habitats where they're able to stand there and, or sit there and eat. Um, so they have to have that ability. Uh, like I mentioned, the shell consists of those eight dorsal shell plates, which allows them to roll into a ball like this, then kind of like a roly-poly or a pill bug. Uh, most feed on algae, uh, on rocks and other surfaces. Um, so they kind of live um, right on the edge of uh, the ocean where, um, you know, the, the constant water is going, is going to be um, causing algae to form on those rocky surfaces. Next up is the gastropods, um, which again, that means stomach, foot. Uh, there's approximately 40,000 different species of gastropods. Of course, most people know these as the snails um, and slugs. Uh, snails don't have one shell while slugs do not have any. Um, these guys are the most successful of all mollusks. They have learned to live in a variety of environments, um, both in the water and out of the water, uh, both in fresh and marine uh, ecosystems. Um, they have a special ability where they, it's called torsion, um, where they can rotate their body counterclockwise um, up into their shell. Uh, this allows them um, to basically bring their head into their shell first, leaving the bottom of their um, gastropod, their foot, uh, exposed on the edge of the shell because obviously you don't want your head sticking out here because something can come in and do a lot of damage. Uh, so the the bottom of the foot is then there, um, and that and and they have kind of a um, a tough layer of um, of skin there. Uh, if you've ever tried to pick up uh, a snail that's actually gone into its shell, it's very hard to to kind of get through that. Um, so this is um, a, a very specific adaptation that these guys have. Uh, they have a rasping radula. So it basically, it's, it's almost like a spiky tongue um, that they can use to, to kind of scrape at their food source um, as they move along uh, very slowly, of course. Um, and that's how they, 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 they eat. Uh, if you've ever had like a, an aquarium, um, where you put snails in, um, you might see them kind of moving along the glass and using that radula, um, you know, to clean the algae off the glass. A lot of people who have aquariums like to have snails in their aquariums because they're basically a cleanup crew. Next up are the bivalves. Um, this is class bivalvia. Uh, a lot of times we think valves, we think like valves in the heart, but what you need to think about in terms of valve is shells. Um, so there's 30,000 species of clams, and other types of mussels, scallops, and oysters. Um, they have two shells, uh, and they have a really strong adductor muscles, there's two of them, that connect the two shells together. Um, and they're so strong that you can't very easily pry them apart. Um, these guys are filter feeders, so this is where we have some de-evolution here. Um, we, they lack cephalization, there is no real head. Um, 
in these guys. Uh, they've kind of sacrificed that um, to gain a little bit more defense with their two shells. Uh, but they, they're filter feeders, so they bring in um, water into their, uh, into their shell um, and then filter out any microscopic organisms in there, uh, and that's how they feed. Um, they're mostly found in marine environments. Um, they can be found uh, closer to shore, but also in the deepest part of the ocean. Um, moving on, the cephalopods. The cephalopods are the most advanced by far of the um, uh, of, of the mollusks and really the most advanced of the animals we've talked about so far. Um, they have high intelligence, uh, a well-developed nervous system and brain. Um, and again, their, their body plan uh, is um, taking their head, if you think of like a snail's head uh, gastropod, um, they've taken their head and they've separated it into, and the, and the foot that was attached, they separated it into um, several tentacles that they can use um, for catching prey and for movement. Um, we start at the top here with the Nautilus. Um, the Nautilus is the most primitive of the cephalopods, probably the first um, to evolve and learn how to swim. Notice all the ones we've talked about so far are all ground dwelling um, organisms, well ground or, or, or seabed. Um, what cephalopods did is they learned to swim. Um, they use buoyancy to float and then um, the first organisms to evolve um, and move into, uh, into a swimming style um, were these nautiloids. Uh, they still retain the shell uh, but they're the only cephalopods that have a shell. Uh, they're still kind of slow, and as evolution continued, um, it was better to be fast than to deal, um, than to have this shell. So as we move down into the octopus and the squid, um, they've gotten rid of their shell. Actually, they've kind of semi-internalized it, um, almost the beginnings of an endoskeleton, if you will. Uh, and um, they've, they've sacrificed that, that, that for speed. Well, at least the squid have. Um, octopus are a little bit different. Um, they've sacrificed speed for intelligence, but we'll talk, talk about that in the video. The video I have is really, does a really good job talking about that. These guys move by jet propulsion, uh, so they have a siphon that they use to suck in water and then shoot it out. Um, they have the largest and, and, and most complex of the known inverts. So um, they get pretty large, uh, larger than any others. Um, and uh, like I mentioned, have, have some really uh, high intelligence. Um, some compare the intelligence to that of, um, of a, kind of a golden retriever, a dog. Um, so um, definitely um, the most advanced of the, of the mollusks. Um, most lack external shells. The Nautilus is the only one that does. Um, the squid have internal shells. Um, we'll talk about that kind of next. Uh, and then the squid, octopus, cuttlefish, uh, and chamber Nautilus um, are, the, uh, are the organisms that, um, that are kind of common in this group. Um, I've got some several videos here to talk about um, some other unique characteristics of the cephalopods. Uh, so here's the first one, and that is uh, cephalopods, specifically octopus, have chromatophores. So what are chromatophores? Wow, okay, this is not a special effect you're watching, but genuine footage of a shape-shifting octopus. It was captured by Massachusetts marine biologist Roger Hanley after hours of waiting on the ocean floor. As remarkable and amazing as the octopus was, I'm equally impressed by the cameraman because here he is. He knew the thing was there when it was very well camouflaged. Yes, hats off to Roger, who was diving off Grand Cayman Island when he came across this jaw-dropping master of disguise. But is our eight-legged friend just showing off, or is there a reason for this epic demonstration? They can disguise themselves and sneak up on prey and also larger fish in the ocean will eat octopus 10 to the dozen there so they're prey for an awful lot of other uh, marine organisms ah survival of the fittest 
So what is it about an octopus's skin that makes him a king of camouflage? The octopus have, just below the surface of the skin, a group of cells called chromatophores. These contain pigment and they reflect light. And they're attached to tiny muscles which its brain can control. When it needs to, it can control those muscles and change colour and change shape, which is the most extraordinary thing about how it camouflages. So this skin just has an infinite number of possibilities of the ways that it can look. But it's only thanks to the patience of natural-born thriller Roger that we actually get to see what happens in an octopus's garden. All right. Um, so those are chromatophores. Uh, it allows basically octopus to um, not only change color, but almost create a texture uh, with their skin. Um, next, we're going to talk about the Humboldt squid. What's interesting about the Humboldt squid is that it is one of the most dangerous animals uh, in the ocean. Um, this is a very large squid that is highly intelligent, uses the, those chromatophores um, for communication, but also to distract. Um, fishermen in the Pacific uh, call them red devils because uh, they're highly dangerous. They'll jump out of the water and try to knock fishermen into the water. Um, and then they drag them down and drown them. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the Humboldt squid. These are krill, tiny shrimp-like crustaceans. Swarms can reach astounding numbers, 60,000 per cubic meter. During the night, they rise towards the surface to feed on plankton. Here, in the Sea of Cortez off Mexico, the swarms attract hunters of all kinds, from humpback whales to shoals of predatory fish. Yet another hunter arrives. It's one from the deep. A Humboldt squid. Two meters long, they have a local reputation as man-eaters. Alone, they're formidable enough. But this is a pack of hundreds. They're highly intelligent hunters. Their eyesight is exceptional. They have powerful tentacles, suckers ringed with 70,000 hooks, and a razor-sharp beak for tearing through flesh. Now the fish find that they are under attack, and so group together for safety. as a team herding the fish against the rocks. to signal to each other when they are about to attack. Okay, 
Uh, the last one is a little bit of a longer video, but I think it goes through a lot of, it shows you a lot of the different types of mollusks um, and also the different body plans. Um, so I think it's a good video uh, to kind of sum up everything. Um, and after that, uh, you'll be all set and you'll move on to your squid activity. Mollusks, like this garden snail. It's just one of over 150,000 different mollusks that flourish today. But when they first appeared, over half a billion years ago, mollusks were but tiny creatures inching around under a protective shell. How did the struggle for survival create so many variations on their original body plan? They face a world of attackers, hungry for their protein-rich, sweet-tasting flesh. But mollusks have survived because their body parts manage to change as new challenges arise. The basic toolkit of a mollusk is evident in the abalone. Most mollusks have some kind of foot. For many, including the abalone, the foot muscle bestows mobility. When the foot brings them to food, mollusks eat by using a unique rasping tongue called a radula. Covering the vital organs is a fold of skin called the mantle. It's the mantle that secretes the trademark body armor of so many mollusks, the shell. has developed just three well-placed ridges along its shell. These ridges add just enough thickness to foil a crab's attempt to get a shell-breaking grip. But since no shell provides perfect safety, some mollusks have added another method of defense. They've developed a means to outrun their enemies. An abalone spends most of its life clamped to rocks. But when escape is necessary, its muscular foot sets out across the bottom. The foot is a biomechanical wonder. With no bones for support, it can stretch out to crawl while holding on at the same time. The abalone employs its foot when a dangerous adversary is close by, such as the many-armed predatory sea star, Pycnopodia. The abalone could clamp itself down, but then it would face the slow, suffocating torture of Pycnopodia's death grip. So the abalone, using just one foot, tends to outrun Pycnopodia, which has more than 10,000 tube feet, all moving with lockstep deliberation. Because the abalone's foot is attached to its shell, it can twist with powerful torque and wrench itself free when its pursuer catches up. But 
competition has driven other mollusks to turn this defensive tool into a weapon that kills. Where cockles are abundant, they attract the attention of a more aggressive mollusk. The moon snail can inflate its foot to four times the size of its entire shell. A foot that serves as both a burrowing tool and a predatory weapon. The cockle, however, has a few tricks of its own. Its foot is a powerful digger, but it can also kick away forcefully when danger approaches. If the moon snail loses its hold, it can also burrow down and surprise a buried cockle. This time, the aggressor succeeds. The moon snail's enormous foot begins to smother the hapless cockle. Even a hard shell can't stop the well-equipped moon snail, which can drill right through to feed on the animal within. The need to procure a meal is a driving force in nature's arms race. And mollusks have evolved an astonishing variety of feeding tools for the job. Peering inside an abalone's mouth, we can see one of nature's brilliant and bizarre creations. It's called a radula, a rasping ribbon of teeth like a chainsaw blade. In some mollusks, these teeth contain a hard iron mineral that grants them supreme durability. This electron micrograph of the abalone's radula shows why it's so adept at tearing through kelp. Other mollusks have evolved radulas suited for different tastes. This one opens barnacle shells. This one can scrape through animal flesh. The compulsion to eat and to avoid being eaten has inspired endless invention. The war began among bottom dwellers confined to the sea floor. An innovative mollusk evolved the ability to swim by floating off the bottom. It was a miraculous step in the survival game. Examining the Nautilus, we can see how evolution transformed a mere bottom feeder into a buoyant battleship. At its head, a mass of 90 or more muscular tentacles can extend from sheaths to seize its prey. Nautiloids found a way to swim by jet propulsion. Water is taken in and rapidly forced out of a funnel that steers and propels the Nautilus. It evolved from the ancient foot to become like a flexible exhaust pipe that also serves as a rudder. Every feature of the Nautilus design is a legacy from its ancestors and the world they encountered. But what set this line of mollusks apart from all that came before was a key evolutionary breakthrough. Buoyancy. But soon, the battle for survival would change dramatically, thanks to a new weapon, speed.
Fish had been around for millions of years, but now they began to evolve quicker, more agile bodies, which greatly enhanced their hunting skills. In time, the floating fortresses were outgunned. But mollusks fought back. Once again, mollusks retooled. One line embarked on a risky scheme. It would gain speed by forfeiting more and more of its heavy protective shell. In squid living today, only a thin remnant of shell remains on the animal's inside. Now it provides support for a streamlined body that's become a kind of natural rocket. Some squid are capable of accelerated bursts, traveling as fast as 20 miles per hour. Compared to the mollusks that came before, squid are superb swimmers. They improved on the jet propulsion system of nautiloids, sucking water into their body, then expelling it forcefully. And over time, they evolved a mantle wall that was muscular and strong. Elastic fibers in the muscle intensify the recoil that expels the jet of water. Triggering this action at lightning speed is a nerve system wired with giant nerve fibers. And every squid is powered by three hearts which can pump blood and deliver oxygen as fast as in humans. But beyond their speed and evasive maneuvers, squid went even farther, venturing into the deep sea. These squid must survive the extraordinary rigors of the deep. And like so many mollusks, they have adapted in singularly creative ways. But another mollusk has gone even further, developing the most impressive weapon of all, intelligence. Octopuses return to live on the bottom. A tremendously risky move for an animal without a protective shell. To survive there, the octopus made dramatic changes to the mollusk body plan. One way is the miracle of camouflage. The octopus can change color and texture in an instant. For the mollusk without a shell, Nature invented the ultimate skin. The poisonous blue ring octopus flashes its colors as a warning. Yet another brilliant design for the arms race. Its early ancestors were at the mercy of shell breakers. Now the crab must reckon with the octopus. An adversary equipped with intelligence. An awesome ability for disguise. And a devastating eight-armed attack. ever-changing world 
is perhaps the greatest secret of the survival game. Alrighty, so now you're going to head over to um, your lab tables and start your coloring. Uh, make sure you put everything back in the Ziploc bags, uh, put your name on the Ziploc bags and leave them in the room, and we'll continue uh, with the squid on Friday. So um, only homework would be to uh, do the mollusk text questions.